What's up, everybody out there? Um, we heard that Brian had a podcast booth and um, with this cool logo behind it, and we thought we would hijack it. Um, some of us were here for food, and um, some of us I, I were just, here for good conversation. I was just trying to find a bathroom. <laughs> There's actually the Chick-fil-A stop right next to this. So Longest I saw that line and here. Yeah. Started walking. Yeah. Well, Joe, um, you were the one who first walked by and said, let's talk. So um, help us out here. Take yeah, over. Uh, and then Shelby come by, and I'm like, "Hey, let's just let's just do something that is impromptu about uh, all the amazing technology that's now available for really average technicians. If you got a phone of any kind or a tablet, really of any kind, we all kind of probably prefer the Apple version because it's clean and simple. Mm -hmm. You now have the ability to do amazing diagnostic right, measurement. Apple, yeah, okay. Yeah, for for Fortunately tablets. Fortunately and unfortunately, yeah, yeah I hear you. Tablets, it's uh, it's really it's Apple only. Yeah. So if you got an Android, uh, good luck with that." Even for Magic Quick, it's just they have frustrations. The phones work well. But. We just lost half of our audience. Um, now it's just three of us. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to sit at the table and talk to you guys with headphones on. So that's really nice. what I was after. So, so um, yeah, tell me about how you're using technology um, to help technicians meet them where they're at with the device in their hand. So we, you know, even with or without the probes, Magic Quick works. Some mm -hmm. people keep thinking that you got to have all nine probes. Well, that's allows you to do a lot of direct capture, but even if only you have a few probes, you can still get a lot of readings and enter stuff manually. And we're still giving you free diagnostics that never has changed since Jim started the app. So you can uh, enter the outdoor air manually if you needed to, or a variety of stuff, or move some probes around and, and do that. So but the diagnostics are there. And we also built a just-in-time education, which isn't just what we have. We also do an HVAC school. So you can click on any of our uh, diagnostics and click on any of the uh, right. the gauges that are in there. And up pops your parameters as to where you should be and what you're reading. And then there you, you got, go, HVAC school. You got education, data. another chance to see our faces one more right. time. Um, actually talk about, like it, I tell my techs all the time, if you don't know what that measurement is on your screen, click on it. That's right. And then read the article. Like, don't yeah. keep going. Learn before you start testing. Yeah, my know. face isn't on it, but yours is. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah right. mine is all over the place. I, I like to say Brian's the voice of HVAC and I'm the face, right? Okay, you, 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 you can say whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shelby, so how, Shelby. Are, how are you changing the lives of average technicians? We're just out here trying. Um, no, we're, we're trying to, <laughs> I mean, that's also true. Um, we, we support in the load calculation and sales process, right? If uh, part of the issue that we have when we're diagnosing issues is often that it comes down to the in initial installation in the first place. Um, sometimes it's how the system was commissioned, but sometimes yep. it's also what was put in there in the first place. Um, and so that's the problem that we're working on is how do you actually evaluate the right system size to put inside of a home? And how do you use technology to do that? So we use a different type of sensor, LiDAR sensors, uh, which are embedded in those iPads. Uh, again, pros, Apple products, right? yeah, yeah, the specifically nice. the pros, so that you can scan a home, build out a 3D model, a 2D floor plan, and an act certified load calculation and actually know what was supposed to be in here. Um, and in many cases, you got the wrong thing. You, you probably have uh, an oversized system with undersized ductwork, but mm -hmm. you still should probably check to confirm that. Yeah. yeah, there's only so much we can do after the fact, even with Measure Quick. Uh, when our when our system is majorly oversized or um, well, the, you know. she pointed out the ducts, the duct issue. So we can tell you airflow. What we really are struggling to tell you. We can tell you have maybe return duct leakage, but yeah. now we're going to reach out to some other technology. And now we're bringing in the uh, True Flow grid. Yeah. So that's also something that's super easy to do. People are like, I want to get trained on that. Well, watch a seven minute video, and it takes you uh, four minutes to do it. So. Yeah. Uh, all these things are so uh, easy for people to get amazing diagnostics. So um, make sure we know who Shelby is and I am. I don't know if Yeah, if you ha hold it with conduit, hold it up. The camera's right here. Okay. I don't know if I can see that. Okay. We'll put it up in the in the description. Okay. But yeah, uh, you came out to the symposium and uh, got to give back a little bit to training that we were doing. Um, that was fun. How did that go? The symposium is the best like the best event of nice. the year. I probably shouldn't say that on camera, but it really <laughs> you is. Just did. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like it, you're among there, friends here. <laughs> no, there's like there's no community like it. Yeah. Um, I I told so many people this, but I think my first symposium was either 2022 or 2023, um, and that's where we met all of our initial beta users when we had yeah. no, like just a shambles of a product. Yeah. 2024 is where we met our first you know first set of actual paying users, and now 2025 it felt like everybody there was already a, a user. Yeah. Um, and it was yeah. awesome for us. The first time I got to ride along with our sales guy who pulled out the iPad and started using it, yeah. the thing I immediately noticed was the customer 
wanted to not be left behind either. They just joined in on it and following around and watching you actually map it out like that. Uh, it's pretty incredible to actually yeah. get your hands on it and use it. That's the goal, right? Like yeah. if you were doing, and this is true about Measure Quick, this is true about TrueFlow Grid. It's if you're doing this work for the customer, the customer should see it. They yeah. should be part of that experience. And ultimately, because what you're doing is complex and homeowners don't understand that. So, so much about building trust is making it apparent to them what you're doing and why you're doing it. And with some good explanation, it can go a very long way um, in providing the best customer service. And both of us have amazing reports that are consumer facing reports yeah. that allow the technician to look brilliant mm -hmm. and provide what kind of information you just gathered from your system. So it's, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that you're basically, there's two big hurdles when, as a technician goes into a house, a lot of times you can have the really good technical um, trained um, uh, nerd who loves to just figure out the problems and solve them and get all the numbers, but they don't know how to bring that to the customer. They don't know how to win trust. And you, you sometimes have the new tech um, who doesn't know anything, but he can have a good conversation and he's, you know, flourishing. Um, and then he's getting callbacks. And so like, um, you guys actually both have products that help actually get the right information into a place that even if you're a new tech, you can bring it to the customer and add value and establish trust. Like for instance, if you're checking things that nobody else has checked before, like on, on the other quotes or on your system, and then you can show that to the customer, immediately you're establishing trust. And then that conversation that you were intimidated to have, or maybe is a little bit harder about the whole picture fix, that needs to happen here is way easier when the customer's already talking like, wow, I haven't seen anybody else use this stuff. I haven't seen Bales do this. But it goes beyond what the technician is believing or thinking or I, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's, these are third party assets that you're thinking yeah. like, you know what, according to Measure Quick, you got a B and here's why, or uh, according to Condo Attack, you know what, this is your load count. So yeah. those are not just like ballpark guesses or, like, eh, you know, a couple of thumbs and a finger, I, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. But That's it's true. Exactly right. I think, uh, again, unfortunately, in many ways, the fact that a third party is required is is disappointing because ideally you'd have the homeowner would trust the person who comes mm -hmm. into their home automatically. But in the absence of that, the default is to be a little bit guarded when somebody comes into yeah. your home. So how do you use something that is separate from who you are as a company to provide that ver verification and validation and also make it more tangible for the homeowner, right? Most people have never thought right. about airflow. Most people don't even know what airflow is. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, even my husband and I, we had um, a radon mitigation uh, attached to our air handler this past month. And he was like, he's like, what, Shelby, do we have any other HVAC systems in our house? And I was like, no, there's one air handler. There's one closet. There's like, there's literally nothing else. Like there's, and he, the, he wasn't even aware what we have. Yeah. And this is what I work yeah. on every day. Um, <laughs> but that third party approach goes back to like when you go see a doctor, like, uh, I think something doesn't matter. There's like, go get it tested. You know, I'm going to send you down the hall. Let's, let's find out what's really going on. You know, I think your arm's broken. Let's test it. So that's really where it comes back to is, and both of us are giving them this high quality of information that you probably would get from a doctor in the same concept, but this is validated information, you know, uh, and we know that it's actually uh, uh, accurate. Yeah. And the, my favorite thing about it, again, going back to making the, the job easier for a technician is that it's easy to see and to, as a customer to like comprehend what's being talked about um, and that's the problem that can happen is that you, you know the right information but their eyes haze over as you just start chattering and you're trying hard to break through that wall and actually once they understand it like where it's at what it's doing and like why this matters um, then they're immediately engaged and ready to have the rest of those conversations so actually having a platform that you can look at and it's simple enough that even a customer can visually see oh this makes sense i understand why i need this so the reason uh shelby's here like let's talk about we talked about our own apps and stuff in general but the concept is is that uh, i would call them newer younger technicians are much more savvy to this stuff but you could be in the in the industry uh, months, weeks, yeah. less than a year, whatever, and this stuff is intuitive to what people are doing. Uh, past that, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's still viable for anybody in the industry to do a, you know, a, a manual J in a matter of minutes in a house with your tablet to guide you through it, or do total diagnostics and commissioning with these tools. This is not even fathomable, you know, five years ago. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, That's absolutely right. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, I think that this also plays into the grit concept. So 
uh, you want to promote grit briefly? Because I think that we're the every time we talk here, we have to talk about grit. Yeah, we did. So yeah. we did. With the, we're done. Okay. No. But no, I think it's a great, great asset, and it all plays back to how do we get younger people to follow trades yeah. uh, that are going to actually provide them with no debt, uh, better income, better freedoms, and a, a better longevity of what they should be committing their lives to, not some college degree that they're stuck with and paying back until you're 60. Yeah, the uh, bridge that I'll draw here is that it um, it bridges the gap between um, a younger person's experience with technology and what they've been able to do and create and uh, stuff that works in their world. And then all of a sudden they talk, they step into where they're learning the trades and they're learning all this technical stuff and they have to do stuff with their hands. But it does bridge that gap where I think so many of uh, the younger techs that I'm training, like uh, in the residential field, because we can get them really green in residential. It's, it's why I say that, it's why I like it. You bring them in and they immediately are drawn to the, that you can actually pull up the tablet and you can see all these different numbers and then there's training education to it and the tools Bluetooth. Uh, whereas, um, you know, if you're closed off to this, if you're closed off to actually using technology and apps to help you right now, you're also cutting off that stream of young people that want to come into trades that feel intimidated by what you do, that, that don't know how to connect. Um, so grit is a, um, another way of bringing young people into the trades and incorporating that. So I just said grit. I just had to drop it. So. Great, great, great. great, great. So if you're uh, somebody who's younger and you realize your boss is not listening to this, do not hesitate to play this to them or That's bring right. this technology to them. Uh, take a class or two and show them that this was easy to do and how you just increase your upskill and you're able to do more things. And if that's not the fit, then there's other companies that are dying for your skills to do this kind of stuff. So um, don't be frustrated because your company is stuck on yeah. analog gauges and doesn't want to accept the future. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There's a place for you, 100%. Right. Yeah. Look at you, Bert. You're a perfect example. <laughs> Even me. Even yes, a right. place for me. Yeah. Even yeah. Bert can find a home. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Awesome. But I think the, the last piece on that is it's not just about there's a huge piece of this is getting people into the trades who haven't been able to be in the trades previously because the barrier felt too high. But I think the other piece is that they can also see results from this. It can make employees stickier if there is technology that supports them and resources that aren't just humans to answer questions and to help them through more challenging problems, which helps the yeah. business scale. There is, I saw some awesome numbers on the return on investment. I know that's a funky word, but like of doing measure quick and helping upskill technicians yeah. because now they can, you know, explain more effectively and sell more effectively yeah. because those repairs are going to happen either way. Is it going to be the shop that explained it better or not that wins? Right. It's going to make a difference. And I think there's a lot of value to the business, not just to the individuals. And obviously we care the most about the individuals, but it has to matter for the business too. Yeah. Win, win, win. Yeah. I had a couple texts ask me in the symposium this problem with what happens. My boss doesn't. How did you get into this training position where you're using all these tools and stuff? And my boss is not. I'm, I told them, start it. Just start doing it. You don't have to get recognized for it. You don't have to get a title. You don't have to get paid extra for it. Start doing it and prove that it works. If it doesn't work, then uh, you shouldn't be using it anyway. But go prove that this stuff works. And uh, then everybody else in your company is going to start asking questions. So, yeah. Well, you alluded to the other part of that. And that is, uh, think about your as a career and mm -hmm. as a profession. I see a lot of technicians. They're like, yeah, they, it's a nine to five job. And I'm like, that's really tough. I get it. You have a family. But think about what it is you want to do. And there's probably other places you should be going before you you know, keep moving. So all those skills you said you alluded to to make a training program and learn everything, other places are dying to have you on board. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been fun having a conversation. Thanks, Joe, for calling us over. And, uh, you know, um, Brian's, we're day, right? I we're Brian's literally about to come sit down and do a video with Copeland. So if you guys right. are uh, watching, hang on. Uh, well, the Joe, main guy. Shelby and I aren't moving. You got, you're got. you not? We're okay. We're not. We're, like, that, we're holding our, our mics. We're not leaving. <laughs> Although this chair was very comfortable. So thanks for having us. Yeah. Let it go, sure Shelby. Thing. Thank you.